Hello everyone, hope you're doing well today. A rainy Monday. A rainy Monday for most of us probably. Not only the weather but also the news that is coming in. But um, well, while we can laugh at things, we'll laugh at things. So this was uh, T. Rob, T. Robin, your son, um, being released from his ordeal of getting arrested by the by the Rosers. By the men in blue, the filth, the bill, the old bill. Five O, Popo. <laughs> you name it, they've arrested him. Uh, but yeah, he, he got out. He got out, and uh, you know, he just went for a little shop down to Iceland, just to get you know a few bits before um, before lockdown two. You know, he's not stupid, old T. Robin, your son. Stephen Yaxley Lennon. See, if I had a surname that was like Lennon, like a, a legendary, iconic artist, um, I wouldn't change it to Tommy Robin, your son. I wouldn't. I really wouldn't. I've said this before to someone from Speaker's Corner. It's like they uh, said, no, no, you need, uh, you need a more English sounding name. Stephen Yaxley Lennon sounds too Irish. We don't want people to think you're Irish. We want them to think you're a bulldog, English bulldog. So we're going to call you Tommy Robinson. And Tommy Robinson will buy you a pint down down the Nags Head. Down the Fox and Dove or whatever pub, pubs are called nowadays. Um, but yeah, so that's him getting out after his ordeal of getting arrested. So called arrested at Speaker's Corner. So let's go here. So someone that you see a lot on English TV, well, every morning apart from the weekend, Piers Morgan, which most of you will know even if you don't watch English TV. It says, 16 years ago, he was sacked from the Daily Mirror after printing fake photos to smear British soldiers in Iraq. So therefore, if he's capable of doing that, he's capable of um, keeping up a lie, such as the one that we're currently in. And you'd imagine he's probably well acquainted with the lodge somewhere. Rolls his trouser leg up. Says his, his oaths and all this rubbish. But yeah, so that's him. The CDC admits there is no CV-19. The key phrase is, since no quantified virus isolates of the 209 are currently available, so basically it's not been isolated. Yeah, you've heard that before, but, you know, it's worth saying it again. Sort of like this here, yeah? Free of information request confirms that CV has not been isolated, which means it doesn't exist. Lady Q uh, showed me this on the community. I can't vouch for it, but if you want to look into it, you can. And then we go to something like this, which is really stupid, isn't it? Where they say that clothes are non-essential items. So therefore they just put all this over it so that you can't buy it. Because if you buy it, it's a crime. It's a bloody crime. How dare you try to buy clothes for your own children? How dare you? In winter, disgusting behaviour. Yeah? It's just pathetic. What times are we living in now, yeah? Look at that. And it'll say on that sign, due to CV-19, we are not allowed to sell these goods as they're not classified as essential goods. So they just want everyone walking around without clothes. They probably do, actually, the weirdos. What's next? So something they've been saying a lot is build back better. And as you can see, someone's gone to the effort of finding loads of examples of this. So it's basically like another great reset, but without saying the great reset, isn't it? It's like the new normal is the new world order without saying the new normal. It's like their buzzwords, but not to panic you. <laughs> 
No, they wouldn't want to panic you. They don't panic you by telling you that there's a virus that is so deadly, but politicians shake hands and they break their own lockdown rules, but nothing ever happens to them and they get it. They so-called get it, but then they survive and footballers get it, but <laughs> they feel fine. It's just, come on now, what a load of crap. How long are we going to take this? The World Bank shows that CB19 is a project that is planned to continue until end of March 2025, 2025. So the intention is to continue it for another five years. Yeah, you see that? So like they've been saying, get used to it, it's here to stay. They even say to you, the VAWCINE won't work for some people as well. So even their medical, their sorry, their um, miracle thing is not going to work for people. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it's just beyond a joke now. Um, people have noted that the sign, the, the symbol on this, this dickhead's of a blazer suit is a 2030 agenda. Yeah, so that agenda 21, but this time agenda 230, 2030. What an arsehole you are, mate. And it's worth noting that all these things that they're saying to you in the media, it's just guidance. It's not law. It's guidance, yeah? So they guide you. They want you to do this. They're guiding you in that direction, but they can't force you. It's like we've been saying for months now. If everyone rebelled against it, there's no way they can control it. There's not enough police. If everyone rebelled against it at the same time through through mass of numbers, there's no way that they'd be able to enforce it and police it. Okay. Pretty scary, this bit. New Zealand announces quarantine camps for people who refuse to be tested. Now, if, I'll tell you what, right? That's basically dictatorship. It's tyranny. It's uh, Orwellian. It's... Mind control is disgusting. Um, I, I wouldn't stand for that. I hope people sort of were horrified by that, but probably not. Probably not. I like this, right? So I don't know anything about UFC or any of this, right? But I just noticed it. So Bryce Mitchell ends his UFC press conference with a anti-mask speech. And basically what he's saying is to make it optional. Yeah, if people, who, if people believe what they want to believe and they want to wear that thing and breathing their own carbon dioxide, that's fair play, that's up to them, but it should not be forced on me, because I've done my research, I realise I don't need to do it, I'm exempt for it. If it was really such a thing as this virus, do you think they'd allow people like me to not wear it? I've never even been asked. Never even been asked. I've had to even ask people as I'm going in, what, are you going to not stop me? And they say, no, we can't police it. Yeah, no, we, we knew that from day one, and you said it yourself. You said it yourself. Vampire bats socially distance when they are sick, a new study suggests. So now they're trying to say, well, if nature does it, then you should do it as well. You should social distance as well. Yeah, but they don't wear a mask. So why are we wearing one? <laughs> but yeah, they're trying to tie it in. Oh, well, nature does it. But what I will say about social distancing, right? Before any of this... I, I, I respect people's personal space, so you could say that I, I would socially distance anyway. I don't I don't want people right close to me when I'm, like, going to the bank or doing something on my phone. I don't, I don't want people looking over my shoulder, and I wouldn't do it to them. So, therefore, I always socially distance anyway. So, it's a load of crap, all this. I don't need some, like, sign on the floor, some hexagon or some circle or whatever the hell you want to put there for, for me to stand... I do it through my own sort of rules and manners and courtesy. You know what I mean? Simple as that. And then we go to this. 
weather bulletins should feature CV infection rates to curb the pandemic, some experts say. So now when you're finding out whether it's raining cats or dogs or whether you can go to the park because it's sunny or there's London fog, now they want you to know the infection rate of CV as well. <laughs> what, so if it's a little bit high, you don't go out? Like, your whole family wants to go out to the park. Oh, no, 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 the infection rate's too high, love. Nah, we'll have to, we'll have to wait six months. <laughs> Is that what they want people to do, to look at the, the infection rate and then say, no, nah, I'm not going out, cancel. We Yeah, I know we need food. Yeah, I know there's nothing in the house and we'll die if we don't eat soon. But no, the infection rate on the... <laughs> Michael Fish just told us on the weather, it's too high, love, so we ain't going out. Yeah? Stupid. This is stupid as well. <laughs> this is a hologram of Kim Kardashian's father. And I, I watched a bit of the video. And it's just him saying, I watch over you every day. It's actually quite weird and creepy. And also, I don't know why it's done. And also, it had to be heard, didn't it? I mean, what what is this about? I'm surprised maybe the end he didn't say something like, oh, and make sure you wear your face covering, Kim, and all this. Do you know what I mean? Make sure you socially distance, Kim. It's cringy, man. What the hell? What is the point of this? Why would we want a hologram of Kim Kardashian's father? Is that what the world was looking for? Is that what we needed to get us, get us out of these dark days? A hologram of some slapper's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Weatherspoons offers 99p pints in run up to England lockdown. So don't worry. You can get drunk for real cheap. Yeah, so we live in England where everyone, well, not everyone, but loads of people like to go out drinking, don't they, right? So now they're seeing 99p it's going to cause it's going to cause issues, I would say. You're going to get people really really drunk. You're going to get people abusing this offer um but yeah there you go and then probably the police get to smack them up in the middle of the street or whatever <laughs> once they're too drunk so now we go to slovakia where they are carrying out mass testing of two-thirds of the population it says the country aims to be one of the first to test the entire population of 5.4 million people for CV. So obviously as a smaller country, they're, they're the ones who've been sort of tasked with trying to test the whole population. If they can do it there, then if we do it multiplied by whatever, then we can do it in our country. That's basically the formula, isn't it? They're using it as an example, an experiment, a testing ground. Can we test the entire population? Well, we'd do it on a smaller population just to get, just to see where, we, where we're at, you know? So just imagine that a whole country tested for it and then they can just falsify the cases, tell everyone they've got it, put it in the paper, <laughs> ask for extended lockdown. Do you see what I'm saying? And then you got here, banning care home visits in second lockdown would violate fundamental human rights of residents and their families. So they're talking about the second lockdown. They're saying that they're going to, it's going to be, you're going to be banned from seeing people in care homes. <clears throat> and that that is a human right that you have. So therefore, if they do violate it, then does that mean that the government can be sued? This is the thing, right? I think there's masses of amounts of reasons that we could sue the government. The only thing I would also say, though, is that they've done everything. They've told you in advance what they're doing. They've warned you. They've given you the information. They've allowed you to be exempt. Um, so everything you're doing is by your consent. 
that's the way that they see it. So they can't be blamed for anything because they told you that they were lying about this and lying about that. They told you that they downgraded it, etc. Yeah. They told you a long time ago that the face coverings don't work for people who are actually healthy. Yeah. So everything that you do is through your own consent. Big shout out to Flu World Order, as you can see there, and then G Truth in front of him. Uh, they were at Speaker's Corner yesterday, out of all days, and um, they got up there and started to speak for the first time. So much respect for them. We need to do it more often. We need sane, balanced people doing it. Yeah. So it's brilliant to see them doing that. So keep keep it going, guys. You got you got uh, you got our support, brother Aaron and brother G. All right. This is a bit sad. Couple become the first in the world to get legally married over Zoom. Yeah, over Zoom while in different countries. So what they're trying to say here is, you know, here's a sign of things to come. Yeah, you know, forget actual contact you'd be doing everything over zoom man even getting married the weird thing about this article here is as you scroll down it's just pictures of this woman like in less and less and less clothes and basically what it seems like is she's some sort of model and it just feels a bit fake it feels a bit fake like it's just a, a sort of calendar shoot for this woman but yeah there you go they're trying to push the the theory that everything is going to be done online now digitally yeah even getting married i'm sure they did some rubbish like some some father saw his child delivered by zoom as well because he wasn't allowed in it's just they are literally changing people's lives people's memories people's pasts people's futures people's present and enough's enough. They sh they shouldn't have this much control over your life. They should not be telling you what you do in your private life. They should not be telling you what you do with your kids. They should not be telling you what they what you do with your own partners. Yeah, it's pathetic. But yeah, man. Um, what's basically happening at the moment is you're getting loads and loads of countries saying, "Yeah, we're we're in the second wave. We get so many positive tests, and we're going to extend the lockdown." And oh, we can't help it. We hope to be out of it by this. And oh, whatever. It's all just lies, man. And in the meanwhile, you get people like this guy doing his his fake arrest routine yeah i don't know how many times this geezer's been arrested gets arrested at protests gets arrested for punching people blah 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 yeah it's, it's, he must have like he must know all the police he probably did before that anyway um but yeah i don't really see how you can support t robin your son and and david like to me they're totally different you got Tommy Robin, your son, who stands on top of tanks in Israel and, and boasts about the fact that he, he'll be fine in Israel and, and posts an Israeli flag emoji while he's stand you know, for a tweet that he put while he's standing on a sodden tank in Israel. Yeah. And then you've got David Icke, who um, puts articles like this. Meet the Israeli intelligence linked firm using AI to profile Americans and guide US lockdown policy. Do you think Tommy Robinson would, would talk about stuff like that? No, he wouldn't because he's getting their money in his pocket. When he goes to prison, so-called goes to prison, he comes out richer. How does that work? How does that work? Because he gets, uh, sorry, he gets wealthy businessmen donating to him. Yeah, because they they uh, they favour what he's doing, which is pushing the Zionist agenda, causing um, causing conflict between um, this country and Islam, which is what's happening in France as well. And it's the last thing that we need right now. We need everyone to be united against the lockdown, against all these draconian measures that they're putting in, against the fact that they're trying to crash the economy and make sure that only the, the massive companies profit, like Facebook and Google and Amazon 
and Uber and Tesla, yeah? So just remember, you got Braden who got arrested yesterday, and you got Tom, Tommy Robinson, Tommy Robin, your son, arrested yesterday. What are the chances? And like I said, look at their suits. Yeah, this guy, Braden, will be the next Tommy Robinson within the next sort of five, ten years. Right, that's my prediction. I've been right about everything to do with these people. So, yeah, I'm pretty confident. So, yeah, you got Zoom weddings. Big up G and Aaron, uh, Flu Ward Order, for going to Speaker's Corner and standing up and, and speaking your truths. Um, we got countries trying to test their whole population. We got cheap booze in England, because that's what we needed. <laughs> we got holograms of Kim Kardashian's mm -hmm. dad, because that's what we needed. We got the fact that they want to put the CV infection rates in, in your weather report so you can find out. Oh, no, should we go to the park today? No, 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 the infection rate's too high, love. We'll go in six months' time when it's gone down. And don't worry, there's nothing wrong with socially distancing because bats do it when they're sick. Big up Bryce Mitchell who made the effort in front of loads of people to say that the, the face covering should be optional. And the New Zealand thing is the most scary thing. Um, if that happened in England, I would... I, I don't know what I would do, but to me, that would be the final straw when they're actually trying to put you in um, quarantine camps if you refuse to take a, a test that doesn't even work. Even the, the inventor of the test said it wasn't used... It shouldn't be used for what they're using it for, yeah? And again, everything is guidance, not law. Guidance... Yeah. So non-essential clothes. CV is here till 2025. Build back better instead of great reset. New normal instead of new world order. Uh, this was pretty cool. So polite notice. David Morris MP is barred from entering the store for voting to starve children. Along with 322 other Conservative MPs, I don't care about Conservative or Labour, they're both the same. He voted against extending free meals for children. He has been listed as one of the top 10 MPs claiming expenses. Wow, I didn't know that. With 70... Jesus, spent so far, I can't even see that number. He also voted to give himself a pay rise of nearly three... Wow. These numbers are too much for a sodding MP. Yeah. They get paid too much for what they do, but why? Because the companies pay, probably give them loads of money as well because they go along with their agenda. Yeah. So there you go. Not much else to say, really, apart from that. But yeah. Thank you so much for your support, as always. It was a great vibe. Um, it was a great vibe on the David Icke, David Icke protest. No bother from the police, no agent provocateurs. Perfect. Perfect. So, yeah. I don't follow anyone who stands on an Israeli tank and boasts about it. Um, you're not here to represent England. You're here to represent Zionism, which is trying to cause divide between people in this country and people from Islam. Remember that Islam counts for 5% of the whole country. 5%. Christianity is is 50%. Um, Jewish people, uh, the Jewish religion is um, under 1%, which is actually very interesting, under 1%. But then what you would have to do is say, okay, um, how much money is in that 1%, in, in that under 1%, yeah? What business interest do they have, etc., etc. But anyway, it's been a pleasure um, spending company uh, in your company. I wish you all the best. I'll be back again tomorrow. Make sure everyone keeps warm and out of the cold too much. Obviously, get your fresh air, but don't get a chill because the last thing we want to do is give these assholes any excuse and say, oh, you need to be tested. 
because remember that's what it's all about now they're trying to test entire countries they're just trying to say that there's millions and millions of cases and panic everyone but we all know it's loads of crap all right so stay strong stay healthy stay informed unite the people to fight the evil this has been overkill over and out